If you are building a pet products brand, if you're hoping to make it big in the pet industry, and if at the same time you have not trademarked your brand, this video is for you. I'll go through 11 well-known pet product brands and share with you some details about when they were trademarked. Once again, if you have a pet product or a pet service and you're hoping to make it big in the pet industry, you might want to consider doing what these really successful brands did. Let the countdown begin. Number 11. Eco-friendly pet accessory and crate brand Petmate was trademarked one year and seven months after their launch. Launched in September of 1988, they filed their first trademark on March 30th, 1990. Just to put things into perspective, both these dates are before the World Wide Web was born. In other words, it was before Chinese copycats could copy your stuff and sell it on Amazon in a matter of days after your launch. Number 10. Known as a brand that produces high-quality toys for pets, Huggle Hounds was trademarked five months after its launch. Launched in November of 2008, they filed their first trademark on April 22, 2009. You can tell these guys take their trademark seriously if you simply look at their website. There are more R in a circle symbols per square inch than you would see on most websites out there. Why? Well, because they understand that anyone can make plush toys for dogs. What makes it a business for them is the brand. And they wouldn't have any of that if the brand hadn't been trademarked early on. So they trademark pretty much everything they can get their hands on. Number nine, Whiskas, a popular cat food brand owned by pet food supplier giant Mars Pet Care, was trademarked just three months after its launch. Launched on November 1st, 1963, they filed their first trademark on February 25th, 1964. To put things into perspective, back in the 60s, it was infinitely harder for someone else to knock off your pet food products and get away with it than it is today. Yet, it only took Whiskas three months to realize that they've come up with a brand that will make them millions, possibly billions over the years. And uh, that if they wanted to get those millions and billions, they had to own the brand. So they did what every responsible business owner does. They protected their most valuable assets. And with brands, you do that by trademarking your brand. So they did. Number eight. Did you know that therapeutic nutrition pet food company Hills trademarked their brand just two months after their launch? Launched on January 1st, 2010, they ran to the trademarks office to protect their brand on March 2nd of the same year. It's not a coincidence that successful companies trademark their brands early on, long before they become successful. They treat their business seriously from day one. That's how they become successful in the long run. And if you're waiting for some sign from above that will tell you that you're now at a stage when you're ready to trademark your brand, well, let this video be your guide. But seriously, the moment you trademark your brand is the moment you realize that you wanna build your business into something that matters. If you're treating your business as a hobby, you probably don't need to trademark its brand. But if you're serious about your business but aren't trademarking your brand, it sends a message to the world that you're treating your business as a hobby and that you're not confident that anything good is going to come out of that. Just food for thought. All right, on to our list. Number seven, healthy, all-natural pet food brand Tiki Pets was trademarked two months after launch in June of 2005. They filed their first trademark on August 16th, 2005. 
See, you don't need to be a massive transnational empire to take your brand seriously. Tiki Pads is a much smaller player. But the only reason they are a player at all is because they were able to build a brand that they now own. Number six, speaking of transnational empires with over 1,600 stores, the largest pet specialty retail chain in North America, PetSmart, trademark their brand just one month after their launch. They rebranded from Pet Food Warehouse to Pet Smart on May 23rd, 1988. And then, long before they were profitable, they filed their first trademark application on June 27th, 1988. Really, if you think about it, for every single successful brand out there, it's not a question of whether or not to trademark their brand, it's a question of how soon. And for most successful brands out there, the answer to that question is as soon as they realize they're building a brand that might end up being valuable in the long run. Now for a moment, forget about Trademark Factory, right? And forget about our unique trademark registration services that we offer with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget. Let's say you use a traditional law firm and the whole trademark registration process costs you $10,000. Often it would be less, but the problem with law firms is you never know how much it is until they're done. So let's use the 10K number as an example. A registered trademark is good for 10 years, and then you can renew it for a couple of hundred dollars for another 10 years, and then another 10 years. So my question to you is, how miserable do you expect your business to do over the years if you think that protecting the brand for the business you're building is not worth the investment of $10,000. Unless your business is a complete and utter failure, you're pretty much guaranteed that your investment in protecting your brand will pay off. And just so you know, with Trademark Factory, you're gonna pay a lot less than 10K to get your brand trademarked. Back to our countdown. Number five. Family-owned Doc Coked company, Snug Pups, trademarked their brand one month after their launch. Launched in December of 2014, they filed their first trademark on January 27th of 2015. Do you realize how many factories in China can make coats for dogs for next to nothing? Why would people choose to buy from Snug Pups if not for the brand that they've built around the story? Notice that I didn't say that people buy the coats because of what the brand is. People buy the coats because they like what the brand does. But the only way Snug Pups could legally own whatever goodwill they have built around their brand was through getting the name trademarked early on, which they did, like I said, just one month after their launch back in December of 2014. Number four, another giant, PetGuard. This premium organic pet food brand was trademarked just 20 days after launch. They launched on June 29th, 1979 and had their first trademark filed on July 19th, 1979. Number three, Popjoy. Known for their customizable subscription boxes of premium dog goodies to cater to every dog's needs, Popjoy was trademarked one month before launch. Now we know there was a great idea to combine pet products with a subscription box model. But the founders of Popjoy couldn't know for sure when they filed their first trademark on November 19th, 2014, because they would only launch their subscription service in January of 2015. And guess what? Their investment in protecting the brand has paid off in spades. Now they own it and nobody else can use a name similar to Popjoy for pet related products and services. Number two, keeping pets healthy through their 100% organic coconut oil products, Coco Therapy was trademarked 16 months before they launched. Basically, a family business founded by people who knew about the potent power of coconut oil and how it can help animals with chronic allergies and other health issues. 
According to their website, they founded Coco Therapy in August of 2009 after they couldn't find therapeutic grade coconut oil that matched the quality they had grown up with. Except, you know what happened on April 7th of 2008? I'm sure you guessed it by now. They filed their first trademark application to secure the brand Coco Therapy. They knew there was no point building a brand unless they owned it. So they took care of the trademark first and started building later. There are many benefits to trademarking a brand before you launch. First of all, you're not attached to the brand as much as you would have been if you had been running with your brand for some time. So if you see a problem with trademarkability, it's less painful for you to switch over to a different brand. Second, there's less risk that someone notices you and runs to the trademarks office first, because if they do, it could be the end of your dream of owning that brand. And third, in many cases, the sooner the application is filed, the easier it is to prove that at the time of the filing, you were the only one using the brand you're trying to trademark. So the chances of getting it registered are higher. That's why Coco Therapy did the right thing and trademarked their brand early on, more than a year before their official launch. And finally, number one, Blue Buffalo, the pet food company that produces high quality dog and cat food with only natural ingredients was trademarked two years and eight months before their launch. Think about it, two years and eight months. That's almost three years before launch. They filed their trademark on December 15th, 2003 and launched on August 1st of 2006. That's what I call commitment and unshakable belief. And guess what happened in 2018? General Mills bought Blue Buffalo brand for $8 billion. It's not that General Mills couldn't figure out how to make pet food on their own. It's not that Blue Buffalo had a one-of-a-kind recipe that no one could reverse engineer. General Mills paid $8 billion for the brand that was loved by a lot of pet owners. And I can guarantee you that they wouldn't have paid anything close to $8 billion if Blue Buffalo didn't own the brand, if Blue Buffalo hadn't trademarked their brand early on. Imagine yourself in the shoes of Blue Buffalo's founders back in 2003. Let's say they spend $10,000 to trademark their brand on December 15th of 2003. Imagine spending that kind of money on a brand that wouldn't be launched until 2006. Was it luxury? Was it a waste of money? Well, it would have been a waste of money if their business idea flopped and nobody wanted to buy their pet food. But given what they managed to accomplish and that they sold the brand for $8 billion, it was the best $10,000 investment they've ever made in their business, bar none. They bet on themselves and they won. What about you? All 11 pet products in this video took themselves seriously from day one and didn't waste any time before they got them trademarked. Whether you sell pet food, pet toys, subscription boxes, or building a multinational chain of pet stores, it all boils down to one strategy. If you want to become successful in this industry, you got to protect your brand early on. In many cases, you want to trademark your brand before you even launch your products. Failing that, you want to trademark your brand long before you get enough publicity for some unscrupulous copycats to file their own trademark and kill your dreams in its tracks. If you've been hustling, trying to get your pet product brand out there, it may already be too late for you to trademark it and you'll have to rebrand and start all over again. We hate to be the bearers of bad news to entrepreneurs who realize they're ready to trademark their brands only to find out that someone else had already done it before them. Or you may still be lucky and your brand is still trademarkable. You won't know until you get a proper registrability opinion based on a comprehensive trademark search. Knowing what you know now, are you seriously going to continue spending time and money building a brand you don't own? 
The people behind each of the 11 pet brands mentioned in this video believed they were building something great long before they started making millions and billions of dollars. They didn't look at trademarking as something they might do once they become big and famous. They looked at trademarking as something you do early on if you hope to one day become big and famous. If you're out there trying to convince pet lovers to switch over to your product, if you're out there working hard to make a name for your pet food, if you're out there hoping you might one day franchise your pet stores all over the country or even the world, do what all these successful brands did and start treating your brand seriously today. Your brand is an asset, but only, only if you own it. And there's no other way to own your brand than to trademark it before somebody else does. If you want to trademark your brand with a guaranteed result for a guaranteed budget, check out Trademark Factory. We've helped thousands of brand owners protect their brands and we'd love to help you secure yours. Until then, I will see you in the next video. Get it,